Welcome to Angela Jane Presents. I am Angela Jane, and this is the first show of 2024, and I have a studio audience. I have one, two, three, four, five guests in the background. So I want to thank you guys so, so very much for showing up to the first studio show of the year. Without further ado, let's start the show. Well, I guess it could start out, shoot, what I do with this show. Okay, I'll flip over to that one. So, hey, would you guys like to do a sing-along? <laughs> Tell us about your... <coughs> Your role. Okay, so I do living history programs. I was a demonstrator for Shampooey State Park and I learned how to um, work the walking wheel, an 1800th uh, spinning wheel. Now I've made these, these are my top spindles. Um, in the 1800s and stuff, I was showing people how to do it with a bottom whirl, which is um, basically the same thing it is like a small spinning now i hand it out to the audience uh, a top spindle okay this is my first challenge to myself actually doing i'm pretty good one-on-one -on -one with people but when it comes to a group unless i have a piece of paper written in front of me drop spindling all spinning is is making um, sheep's wool and this is sheep's wool this is Corydale sheep's wool um, this came off of a fleece i went to the sheep farm and i helped on shearing day and i was helping um, katie who's a sheep farmer and she breeds uh, Corydale you know, it'll be better if I get her in the studio, but everyone's camera shy. <laughs> um, this is why I go on location to places and put it in. I don't know. I'm not used to talking to a big group. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure who to focus on. Okay, Pamela, maybe I'll focus on you. Okay, the sheep's wool. I went, uh, went to the sheep farm on Saturday, and I got to help um, with shearing day. So... The shearer showed up. Do they, they shear the sheep there and then do they clean it there? Too? Oh, okay, no. Basically, when you go shearing, okay, sheep's wool. You go there, there's a shearer. He shears all the wool off of the sheep. And then the next person in line, it's kind of like an assembly line, grabs up the fleece, throws it on the skirting table, and usually the farm wives are the ones skirting it out, bag it out, number it, and then it goes into a pile. And then it uh, had about 37 sheep sheared that time. At the other farm I had uh, helped out at, they had um, 200 sheep. And then I hear some of the commercial sheep shearers, they go down and they do 500 sheep. So with sheep, you have to take, you give them a haircut. So for hand spinners, uh, what I, I got this fleece raw, then I washed it. Oh, I see. So what I used is Dawn dish soap hot water and I dipped it in and kind of opened up opened up the um, the locks and then this is uh, once it gets to this point then I set it out to air dry once it gets to this point it's all dry now I'll fluff it up so it's like carding it like that so you've got some on the one I gave you you see how that's up like that so it's all fluffed up. Then what I do is that one's still kind of on there, but do you see how it's fluffed up like that? Right. I'll attach it here, but I'll pinch right here. You see that? I'll just take, take the, this, pinch right here, and then I'll twirl it. I'll spin it, and it'll twist from the cup holder hook all the way to my fingertips. See I that? See. Yeah, see how that's doing it? And you just twist. And then I'll stop it because it's twisted. You feel the twist in the line there? Right. Now, see, you pull a little bit up here. And if you watch, and then you let go, it twists up. Right. Right. 
and then you spin it tight again, and then you pull it up, pinch, and it goes up. And all it is is making yarn is repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> How do you get to uh, watch uh, the uh, shipping process? Is that uh, is there a cost? Are you public invited? Uh... Well, to see how they shear, I took the camera once and filmed it, put it on YouTube, and also I worked it. <laughs> I got involved, got my hands dirty, and I worked. That's how I got involved. How would he go watch it? Huh? How would he go? You want to go watch it? I'll have to call all up the farmer the next sheep shearing day and see where we could put you in to help out. Well, uh, <laughs> carrying a camera and it's not good holding a camera with lanolin all over your hands. That's from the sheep. Oh, well, um, everybody has a different job. He just wants to watch. I want to photograph. Okay, to photograph, all I have to do is, all, is uh, check in with the... Uh, farmer and say, hey, is it okay? And if it's okay, it's okay. What's, what's it cost for, uh, uh, obviously you are working, so you got to take away some of the uh, wool, but is there a, a cost for other people who want to take up the hobby? Oh, well, basically, um, like there's a flock and fiber festival and stuff, but um, I just buy, buy the wool from the farmers. It comes straight from the farm, from the farmers. Now, if you go to oh, and there are shops out there that would have fiber and stuff. Like, for example, this I ordered in. This is merino sheep's wool. It's been made into roving and pre-dyed. So um, I ordered that up and had it sent to me. And then, then I'll take that and do the same thing with the roving as I do with the raw fleece. Roving so, is the uh, ropes? Uh-huh. Oh, this is basically fiber that was put through a machine, but it's the same thing. I'll still fluff up like that to spin it into yarn. So I'll take that off. Oh, you get you getting it. See, it gets addictive, doesn't it? <laughs> now see how I'm touching the other color? See how it, I spin it up tight? And because it's spun up tight, then I'll pinch here so it doesn't go in. Then I'll pull it as thick as I want it. Then I'll pinch here again, and then the twist will happen. See how that's a little thicker yarn? Yeah. So I'll put the twist on, but I pinch here really, really tight. So, and then I'll pull like that. And now I'm making bumpy yarn, also known as novelty yarn or the first time making yarn. And we'll just call it cool for a scarf, making this scarf. <laughs> and then I'll just, and as you get um, more practice in doing it, there's the yarn. Now, when, and once I get a long line, I'll take it off and put it on the bobbin. So the bobbin is underneath, the twist doesn't happen anymore. Then I'll tie it around here and start again. How do you keep it from unraveling? Um, so I've got it twisted like that, right? So I'll take it off like that, and then I'll wrap it around here, and it won't twist or untwist. Okay. And then I'll wrap it around the cup holder hook a couple of times like that. Because all the twist action goes from the cup holder hook to your fingertips. I've heard bobbins, what they call the things that they put on the big machines. And on the spinning wheel, too. If you look at the spinning wheel, it has a bobbin. So as, you're, um, as the fiber's turning into yarn, it's automatically going on the, rolling on the bobbin. So that's not so twisted. Yarn, that's where it's collected. That's where it's collected. And then the next step is I'd take it off of, the, off of the bobbin, wrap it up around my arm, stick it under hot water because the hot water will set it so it won't come untwisted. So it's the felting process of the hot water that'll stop it from twisting. Now see how I twist, this is slow motion, but you see how I'm drafting? You see the draft with the triangle? And I'm putting the twist on, and that's basically what it's doing. So I'm making a nice yarn that I can knit with. Is that considered one ply? Like I this is one ply. I have sweaters that are two ply and I was 
when when it's two ply, this right here, yarn on yarn, that's two ply. Now you want it four ply? That's four ply. <laughs> but you see how thick it's getting? So when you see yarn that's uh, four ply, but it's this thick, it's because it was spun up on machines to make it really, really smooth or thin. And then I make the hat yarn, so that's about what I use for hat yarn. The wash a wool sweater tends to shrink. You mentioned, though, after you do this, you wash it. Um, well, yeah, I'll put this under hot water because this will come untwisted. But the hot water will set it so the yarn won't come untwisted. And then you make it into a sweater and you wash it accidentally and it will shrink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> yeah, Barbie can wear it then. <laughs> I've done that. Hand wash and air dry. That's, that's the basic thing with the wool. Hand wash and air dry. Unless you want it to shrink a little bit and then put it in the dryer for about five minutes after it's damp. Take it out and go, okay, that's about as <laughs> tight as I want it. And um, see, I, oh, yeah, I made some sheep slippers for my daughter. Then I thought we could have a sing-along. <laughs> if the audience is up for it. Like old MacDonald. I was thinking that. Instead of the cow, I was thinking a sheep. <laughs> or Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> yep. Yep. In fact, that's by photography. Stop motion is all photography. But look how many times you got a Wallace and Gromit. Wallace and Gromit is all clay figurine stop photography. Uh, there's, some, there's some new ones on right now that uh, you can watch. Uh, the, a sequel to Chicken Run. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, does it have Mel Gibson's voice in it? <laughs> that's the one voice that's not the same. Oh, no, but it was Mel Gibson. Everyone knew he was a rooster, which is a chicken. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Oh, you make his hats? No. It's your name, Actually, they're sheep slippers. sheep slippers. But I didn't use wool yarn on these um, because uh, it goes on a toddler and you have to wash them a lot because they'll go through mud. Okay, so other handcrafted items. These I actually made myself at a. You've seen the blacksmith on several of the other shows I've had, but, and also me working with them. Now, um, if you can tell, I made some hooks. This one right here, where's the camera? Right here. There we go. This is my very, very first hook I ever made, blacksmithing. And then, as I kept get, uh, doing it, they got a little bit more professional looking. So, they all still work the same way, and this one is uh, my last one. This way I added a little shine to it, the wax stayed on, so it looks really nice and it's not as rusted as the other ones. <laughs> These, one's a left-handed, one's a right-handed um, meat hook. So, turning on the barbecue, let's see. Oh, that's cool. Let's go back to that. <laughs> okay. Can't really see it in the black, but this is the, that's right, because you hook up like that when you're barbecuing and flip the meat over, flip the steak over. Um, so, right handed and left handed. And since my daughter's left handed, I made her a hook. And one of these days, I'll get it to her. <laughs> and of course, my first and favorite thing I wanted to make when I first learned to take the blacksmithing class was a fire poker. So this is the fire poker I got to make. And it's got a twist too. So you notice the, the wool thing, the twisting? And the other handcrafted stuff I like reverse to... Twist. Reverse twist. It's called a reverse twist. <laughs> And the other craft that I like to showcase is watercolors. 
It's been a while since I've done watercolors, but this is my watercolor set, and it's about 30 years old. So obviously I haven't been using the watercolors on a regular basis. <laughs> but this is my favorite setup uh, to make colors. And because um, I'm more of an illustrator, painting, uh, I finally learned to paint is by when I dip in the watercolors, I pretend that it's a pencil and I'm drawing. So basically, I'm drawing with paint. So then I'm able to paint. So it's like taking a, a skill that I'm really good at, which is illustration, pencil illustration, and then just pretending the paintbrush is a pencil, but remembering to put the paint on it now and again. <laughs> any, any questions? <laughs> so uh, half the audience is having fun with the spindle. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Now, would any of the audience like to be on camera? Not today. Oh, okay. Not today. <laughs> Got any questions? What do you want to know about? You've seen some of my shows, right? You didn't show any of your little drawings. Um. Well, you could put that in post production. Yeah, I'll think. I'll have to think of what to draw. Actually, one of my uh, marker drawings is the eagle. I just shrunk it up because one nice thing about print shops and everything, you do art, you can print it or you can shrink it down and make books and everything. Publishing. Is, is that the Hungarian uh, eagle? I can't see it from there. Well, here, come and get it. I've seen you on camera before. <laughs> I love that shirt. <laughs> that, that is kind of like, oh no, that's kind of like yeah. uh, uh, North American indigenous. Mm -hmm. uh, Alaskan totem pole. So I learned how to do the techniques to make, make it from an art book I got out of the library. <laughs> and I made my own eagle. Well, I put the salmon because we're in the Northwest. And if you look real closely in it, it's got an egg in there with an eaglet in it. That's to represent my daughter. And yes, pregnancy is a <laughs> challenge. <laughs> they kick in there too. <laughs> okay, you guys having fun? Do you need a break? No. They have a bathroom here. No, I'm just trying to come up with more material because I know I'm going to cut half of this out. <laughs> so, well, maybe not half of it. I might lower down my volume and, well, okay, I could do the ending credits. Um, I, I put something. Well, with the spinning wheel, see, this is a process, but if you have somebody on the other end, just pull in while you spin. It's kind of like doing the blacksmith stuff, right? You have somebody cranking away. <laughs> No? Okay, I got that wrong. Okay, I'm going to get that. Get a bigger hammer? Or do you... I, no, I've seen how on the shows they'd hit it alternating. Yeah. Take turns. Yeah, taking turns. <clears throat> Where the smith hits, the apprentice hits the same place with a bigger hammer. Wait a minute, if the apprentice has the bigger hammer. And all the blacks do is, all right, hit here, apprentice hits there. If he wants to hit over here, that's where, wherever his, the smith hits, that's where the apprentice hits with the big hammer. <clears throat> no, okay, so as the blacksmith gets older, he puts more work on the younger one. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> So, so we're going to have a photographer for an upcoming show uh, and give you a highlight of that and possibly somebody talking about blankets <laughs> um, and then hopefully a publisher in. That would be kind of cool to hear about a publishing job. Ah. It's an idea and I show you how I edit this out. 
But yeah, I wanted to open this up so I could have more people come in studio to, I don't know, what do you think? Think you'll tell your friends, go ahead and sit in there for a little bit, maybe? Well, being here today, what do you think? You think you would say your friends, just go in for once so you can actually see yeah, okay. a studio shut up, set up? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, nothing else that uh, helps you have the audience give you feedback so you're not just... Uh... Oh, okay, that's why you're here. What kind of feedback are you going to give me? Well, no, no. <laughs> that's why I'm asking questions and, you know, pulling oh, okay. Well, I finally figured out Johnny Carson. I think half the time he didn't have a studio audience, so he had Ed McMahon sitting there looking very bored. And I saw one point where the camera just went over and kept Ed McMahon out of it. <laughs> That's interesting. The more I learn about the film and stuff, I'm like, oh, oh, that cameraman messed up. It's kind of like when John Wayne still had his wrist watch on <laughs> or those old cowboy shows where um, where a jet stream went over. <laughs> yeah. Long thin cloud. And some of them. <laughs> well, I guess um, thank you for showing up, my first in studio audience. And you starred in King Kong. Bay Ray. Bay Ray did. Bay Ray did. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and Bay Ray is here. <laughs> Long was Chuck, <laughs> and the blacksmith, and the watercolor lady, who's still really interested in um, making yarn. <laughs> I did, I made some yarn. Cool, isn't that neat? And then see when I'll take it off and uh, put it under hot water. Actually, I'll show you how I do that in the bath. Well, <laughs> I'm not having that on, but in the bathroom. Okay, I'll show you. <laughs> 